welcome back to Tech Made Simplified. Today what I have for you is a how to build your own PC video. It's going to be short and it's going to show you the most important um, parts of how to build. And this part right here, you just, to install the CPU, all you do is just unlatch the latch and then it'll come up. And all you do is look on the notches on the CPU and make sure that that the, there's like a little triangular indicator that it's uh, on the lower left hand of the CPU that's matching the lower left hand side of the um, motherboard that's located on the motherboard and all you do is just uh, set it in straight and then uh, give it a little wiggle and then uh, make sure you don't uh, push down on it and then that's pretty much it it's in and all you do is just pull down the plate and uh, there will there'll be a, uh, a, a blocking plate on top it's still okay uh, but in, on, when you push the lever down it automatically pop out to expose your CPU so you just move it out of the way and just put the latch down and that's uh, pretty much how, how you uh, install the CPU and uh, it just the latch just goes right under where the little uh, hand comes out right there next uh, to is to uh, put in the RAM and then uh, you notice that there's uh, little pins that you have to push back out for it to uh, open up and then uh, all you do is uh, push it out and then on this motherboard, it's weird because the bottom, uh, there's a bottom piece to it where the, I'm touching the top part, and the bottom part on this motherboard does not have those, uh, those, those latches for that for you to uh, lift out. And uh, all you do is just match up um, the RAM into the uh, into the slot, and I would suggest uh, putting in uh, to the one the first one. The farthest right one, and then you skip one, and then you put into the next one that's just a similar color. So you match up the colors. If you're gonna do uh, just two, two uh, rams, then you uh, you just pretty much uh, put it in the similar color. So pretend uh, just that um, the if you're gonna put it into the black ones, then put into two of the black ones. Then if you're gonna put into the, uh, the two other color ones, then you put into the other two color ones. So you can get dual channel. But uh, if you're just putting in one kit, then you put into uh, those two. All right, now I got the RAM in, and you see that I I, I didn't put it into um, into uh, the slots right next to each other. But you skip one slot, so it'd be dual channel. But if you only put one in one uh, one stick of RAM, then you just put it on the farthest one, because that'd be channel A, and then uh. <clears throat> where I put the uh, second one right here is channel B, so you get dual channel. If you put both of the RAMs right next to each other, it'll only go run in a uh, single channel, so that's not what you want. And uh, that's pretty much it for the RAM. Next is um, installing the rear I.O. plate. And uh, you can see that this uh, I haven't put any, anything inside the case besides the power supply. Uh, for for this case, you have to put the power supply in first because it'll make your work workflow a lot easier. And uh, uh, I'm just showing you inside the case, and uh, there's uh, there's actually eight um, uh, motherboard standoffs, and uh, it does have pretty good space inside this case. If you don't know what this case is, this is the Rosewell. Uh, line M, and you can find this on Amazon for about fifty dollars. And uh, you can see that the there's uh, two five and a quarter inch bays, which is uh, the toolless kind, and uh, there's three three and a quarter inch bays, and three and a half inch bays, which is uh, two of them is um, the toolless kind and one of them is the screw in kind so you put in your own screw for the bottom one and it does have the connectors for your front IO and the front USB 3.0 two USB 
three, uh, 2.0s and uh, your power indicator light, your hard drive indicator light, and your power button and your reset button. And that's pretty much it for the, the inside of the case. Okay, before you put your motherboard on, you have to put the I.O. shield on first, okay? And uh, you have to look at the configuration of the rear I.O. Uh, to put it in the right way. So I could tell by this motherboard that uh, the USB 2.0s is going to be the top port. So all I have to do is just... Put it in, then just snap each side on, and then you'll be done. Okay, now I got the rear IO on. Uh, you can see that it has like a little spot right there for a little fan, but I didn't buy the armor kit for this motherboard, so I didn't I didn't get the fan. And you can see the Griffin symbol right there. It was kind of hard to put it, uh, put it in because it was. Uh, this case is really cheap, so it it wasn't machined really well. So I had kind of trouble putting it in, but I managed to actually snap in, snap it in. So on to the next part. Now the motherboard's in. Uh, what I found out was there's only. Um... I don't know what's wrong with this case, or um, it's how the micro ATX is, but there's only one, uh, three screws on top, three screws in the center uh, row, and then two screws just uh, on the bottom row. So there's only one right here and one like kind of near the center right here. So now it's bolted. Uh, it was pretty hard to put it in because the um, the rear I I O shield was uh, kind of thick. So and this is a cheap, very cheap case, so it was actually hard to snap it and snap it on because the first time I put I put it on, it didn't actually didn't go in all the way, so I had to kind of really force it in. And finally, the all the all the motherboard standoffs they all lined up. So uh, next, um, I think I'll be doing the CPU heatsink, and uh, the one that I'm going to be using is the Cooler Master Hyper Two Twelve Evo. And uh, we're putting that on, and when we come back, that'll be all mounted. All right, I got the heat sink in, and everything else. I was a little bit too lazy to do one piece by piece by piece, so uh, I'm j I just put everything together. It took me quite a quite a while. That's why I didn't want to film the whole thing. It took hours, but uh, I do got the heat sink in, the Cooler Master Hyper Two Twelve Evo. Uh, it was fairly easy to put in. I just uh, the one key thing about um, <clears throat> mounting it on the 1155 or 1150 socket or 1156 socket is that <clears throat> the bracket. I don't know if you can see it. Your car can't see see it right here. Uh, the back plate is easy to put in, but the um, the bracket that goes under the heatsink to tie it down. Um, and kind of like a that cross uh, tie down thing. Uh, there's the the screws that they they have three placements in each screw. There's four screws, and there's uh, each each one of them. They have three different spots that you could um, uh, position them. So for the 1156, 1155, and the 1150 sockets, you'll have to put it into the center position. That's the key thing, because if you don't put it to all, all all of the four screws into the center position, uh, it will not mount on, and it, you'll have a very hard time. Uh, I kind of had that that uh, problem the first time I tried to put it in, um, <clears throat> but once you put it into the center position, then it works just fine. Um, the center position meaning the screw, not not the bracket itself. The bracket you could uh, click it. Uh, for me, it was from a uh, closed position to the two clicks open to uh, to make it <clears throat> the exact um, size and then um, uh, the screw position should be in the center so there's like a bottom sec uh, there's three positions so the, the there's the first position will be uh, the very bottom where uh, you 
to reposition the screw you pull the screw you is a spring kind of loaded so you pull the screw up a little and then you uh then you will you will have three different positions to position it. so it'll be the bottom the center and the the uh, farthest up so <clears throat> remember to if you're going to mount it onto an intel 1150 socket then you put it into the center position because if you, if you don't put it into the center position it's not going to it's not going to line up so you don't have a hard time uh, the back plate is is uh, fairly easy to put on um, it's pretty much self-explanatory and all the screws are all uh, on in one bag and if you're putting into a 2011 socket then it'll have its separate bag for you to put the standoffs on because the 1150 no, the 2011 socket does not have a you don't need a back plate because it already comes with a back plate so all you have to do is just take those standoffs screw it in uh, tighten it up and then all you have to do is just uh, I don't know what the screw position is like what I said about the 950 where it's in the center but uh, I don't I don't know the 2011's position so I can't I can't um, give you information about that but uh, all you do is just you know for 29 all you do is just screw it in pretty much lined up screw it in because uh, it doesn't need the back plate and uh it's fairly easy enough to put in Bef just remember before you put it in that you put thermal paste or thermal grease on your um cpu ahead of time and the uh, the um the kit for the hyper 212 evo does come with their uh cooler master's own uh, thermal paste already uh, but what I used in here was the um, the Arctic Silver uh, thermal paste. Uh, but uh, it was fairly easy to put in. And uh, what what the method that I used to put in uh, to apply for uh, the thermal paste? Every single uh, time when I use thermal paste, I always do the uh, the center method where you put the uh, a dot right in the middle. And then all you do is just put the heat sink right on top of it and it will automatically spread. So far that's worked really well for me. And when actually when you take off the heat sink, it'll actually have it, it'll actually cover majority of the CPU. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't suggest spreading the um, thermal paste because they'll leave uh, um, bubbles in there and uh, it'll leave uh, room for the heat to uh, not to uh, have good contact the CPU won't have good contact with the the heat sink so I suggest just putting the, the dot in right in the middle and just putting heat sink right on top because uh, the way it spreads it spreads almost like um, the uh, stock Intel heat sink where right is right in the center only because that's pretty much where you really need it just right in the center not all around the CPU uh, all you really need is just in the center area that's where all the cores uh, the core sits anyway, so that's pretty much it for the, C the CPU cooler. Uh, I put in my RAM. If I didn't tell you what my RAM was, uh, I'll give you guys uh, an overview of all my components. Uh, the CPU that I have in here is the Intel Core i i5 4670K, which is the overclockable one. But uh, what I did was I um, already did some tests with this whole rig already. And uh, what I did was underclock. Underclock it to 3.4. Um, so I what I did was uh, change the turbo speed to uh, 3.4. So it locks it at 3.4 for all cores. And what I did was undervolt it to uh, nine, uh, 0 0.9 volts instead of the uh, automatic mode where it was 1.086 or something like that on full load it was 1.06 or 1.08 volts uh, during full load so uh, I dropped it down a little and it dropped the temperatures um, down a little bit uh, one thing to note though uh, these Haswell chips they get pretty hot so that's one way of um, <coughs> of um, cutting down on the heat and the RAM that I have is the Crucial Ballistic Sport they're black and green which it matches the board okay uh, it'll probably match the Gigabyte um, Sniper M5 better but uh, it is fine because you don't really see it from the side so uh, it's fine is uh, what I did and what I have is an 8 gigs uh, pair so it's uh, four by four. 
so 8 gigs and they have the XMP profile of 1600 um, just remember that when you prop, pop in your RAM uh, it will default to 1333 and you'll have to go into the uh, UFI and or aka BIOS and change it to six, uh, the XMP profile or you could dial in yourself but um, what I've seen is that if when you uh, put the XMP profile it's much easier because it gives you the timing uh, the clock speed and uh, everything for you so it, it's a lot easier so it's 8 gigabytes 4x4 four four, uh, dual channel 1600 megahertz that's why this one running and uh, for the graphics card I already did an unboxing on it but I'll, I'll tell you guys again, it's the AMD, uh, the chip is uh, AMD's uh, R9270 and uh, the board partner I have right here is the Gigabyte version of it. It's the Windforce uh, twin, twin cooler, it's not the triple cooler because this, uh, the 270 does not have the uh, three, 3 fan cooler. The 270X has the 3 fan cooler. And uh, it, it does have two gigabytes of uh, GDDR5 RAM. And the uh, clock speed on it is uh, five, 950 megahertz and boosts up to 975. And the memory clock is at uh, 5600 megahertz. And uh, it, it does take two slots. It's a dual slot card. And you can see it does stick out pretty far. But this case, it, it could take up it could take a pretty big card so it's not so bad um, the the hard drive that I have on here is just a two it's just a 2.5 inch standard spinning hard drive uh, this case does have a um, two and a half inch mount but it's on the bottom and it's mainly just for SSDs that's why I didn't mount it on the bottom and that's why I have a piece of cardboard right here because I don't want my hard drive um, the bottom piece or the PCB piece uh, touching the metal of the case because it might zap it will zap the uh, hard drive and it will render it un unusable uh, that's why I have a piece of cardboard here but in the future I'm, I'm planning to get a uh, 240 gigabyte SSD or maybe a 120 might be a 120 and just uh, put this uh, hard drive somewhere else and in the front right here I have a uh, Corsair SP120 Quiet Edition in the front. I know this is used for, um, uh, this is pressure optimized and this is not really used for a front fan, but I put it here because the front is fairly uh, small and restrictive and I have uh, two different filters in front of here to uh, minimize dust. So uh, I want to get as much air as possible inside the case. Um, so that's why I used the 120, uh, SP120 from Corsair. Um, it's not loud it's uh, pretty quiet and in the rear for the fan I have the uh, stock fan that came in this case and uh, how I hooked it up uh, I hooked it up to one of the uh, chass chassis fan header on the motherboard but I have a, a fan reducer on it so it uh, the max uh, RPM it goes is around 1200 to 1300 uh, RPM instead of the um, 2000 RPM that uh, it could go up to and it maxes off around 1200, 1300. So it's pretty quiet too. And most of the time it's running at around 900 RPM. So I like my uh, rigs to be really um, quiet. So that's why I have it hooked up on a, a, a fan fan reducer. Uh, the, the CPU cooler, I kept the Cooler Master um, fan on here, the one that came with the uh, CPU cooler. Uh, but <clears throat> it is fairly quiet. It's really quiet. It runs around about 800 to 900 RPMs, and it hardly ramps up. It gets pretty loud if you if you're going to use it as a uh, a fan header. Uh, you plug it to a fan header on uh, this motherboard. It gets pretty loud. Uh, so I wouldn't suggest using this uh, fan for for a um, uh, your case fans well, as one of your case fans. Uh, on this side, I do have a push pull configuration right here, and I put I had I just put one of my fans that I have left over, the uh, Cooler Master Sickle Flow on this side, and I do have it uh, hooked up to uh, the optional um, CPU fan header on this motherboard, and I do have a nine volt 
um, fan reducer on there uh, to minimize the sound because it does go ramp up all the way to 2000 RPM but when I when I put it onto the 9 volt then it maxes off around maybe I don't know a lot lower than that I'm not too sure which uh, what RPM it is but it does quiet it down and plus the motherboard does control it too so it does run around 900 RPM during idle and it does kind of ramp up a little bit but not enough to where you can really hear it um, <coughs> uh, what else uh, that's pretty much oh, oh and the power supply here is the uh, Corsair CX600 not the modular version this is the non-modular version so that's why I have some of the of the um, the cables up here and uh, the way that I routed the cables there's a little bit of opening on this side uh, and next to the five and a quarter inch bays over here and it's pretty much I tucked it through the hole the little small hole right there and uh, in case if like later on when this power supply dies I'm not going to be trying I'm not going to be pulling all the cables out I might just cut it all off and just pull out the wire so that's pretty much uh, if it that depends if uh, I do have this power supply about two years now so I only have about one more year of um, warranty left through Corsair so if this power supply dies within maybe next year or so then my warranty will be gone and I'll just cut the wires off and just replace the power supply uh, and then I I don't on this this build I do not have a a Blu-ray drive or or a DVD uh, writer I didn't I choose I chose not to put one in and uh, so the the top bays are here are uh, unoccupied and uh, on the very top uh, three and a quarter inch drive I'll show you guys I do have something hooked onto it and it's the it's a car beater. It's a Sony car beater, and it takes. It has does have a USB, and USB 2.0. It's also compatible with 1.1, uh, and it does have an SD card slot, memory stick slot, and it has a um, what you call compact flash, which I don't use, and my cameras don't take compact flash anymore. So all I really need it for is the SD card slot so and maybe use the, the USB part USB port and that's pretty much it that I'll show you guys the rear the rear it has uh, the power supply is a top mount power supply and then this is the 120 millimeter fan this case also does support 80 millimeters and 92 millimeters and 120 millimeters but uh, why use smaller right use the biggest one you can because it'll blow more air and it'll have less noise and uh, down here it, this is the video card where the video card goes and there's actually five expansion slots on this on this case and uh, the video card does take two I'm not planning on uh, cross-firing or SLIing or dual graphics on this um, build. I'm just going to use one because one it already gets way hot already. It's not because of the case. It's because of the video card. Um, I don't know what, but this video card does get pretty toasty. Um, um, the it does have the wind force uh, cooling, the dual fan wind force cooling, but I don't think it's as good as the three fan one. The two fan one, it, it does compromise a lot, and I don't know why, but this card, it, it only draws about 140 to 150 watts, right? Or 100, it, the TDP is only 140 to 150 watts. And you know, you, if you don't know what TDP means, that's um, pretty much uh, kind of uh, the heat generated so it's about 150 watts of heat so uh, your cooling has to actually dissipate 150 watts of heat so if people get confused with that in uh, power draw power draw is a little bit different from TDP but it kind of uh, people I know why people are getting are getting confused with that because it does kind of draw about the amount same amount of power too
because uh, for example if it's like 140 watts TDP then it does draw about 140 to 150 watts uh, from your wall from your wall socket so um, that's pretty much what it is and it seems like this cooler um, anything uh, for the fan speed right anything below 35 it's not that loud but once you get to about 40 percent fan speed it gets pretty pretty noisy uh, but uh, it's, it's not that bad the default uh, fan curve for this this card is uh, the max fan speed is around 65 percent and that gets pretty loud that is a lot louder or yeah that's a lot louder than my old uh, GTX 580 which had like the reference design blower cooler what I what I'll suggest uh, for smaller builds like this like micro ATX or uh, mini ATX and if your case is really small then uh, you should get the reference design cards uh, what I mean by reference design is um, the reference design cards do not have dual cool dual fans and they don't blow all the heat inside the case uh, what the reference uh, design coolers are is like they have one fan that um, sucks in all the air and it, it's a blower design so it suck in uh, all the air or whatever air that's inside your case whether it's cool or hot it'll suck it in and then it'll blow across the uh, the video card and then it'll blow all the heat out from the back so it's way it's, it's, for for me I think it's a lot better for a uh, smaller form factor PCs and uh, in this case it probably would work better because uh, it does get pretty hot uh, the, the heat temperatures rises fairly slow uh, but then it does get up to around uh, 77 uh, degrees uh, uh, Celsius for uh, inside this case if I close all the uh, everything right here if I close the sides it'll get up to 77 and uh, be that's because uh, the all the heat gets blown about uh, blows gets blown this way and then it blows into the case right here too and then it blows up right here and then uh, some of the air gets stuck right here but th this fan helps uh, exhaust the heat too and then uh, but then some of the air on the on the right side of the case over here um, it, it kind of gets stuck over here and it doesn't really help because I have this fan in taking air uh, to cool down the motherboard and it doesn't really help I'm not gonna I'm probably not probably not gonna turn this uh, fan around as exhaust because um, I don't want my case to get too dusty. So uh, I do have um, filters all around. So uh, this case does come with uh, a side panel. I mean the side panel does come with uh, two two mounts for uh, 120 20 millimeters, and there's there's two of them, right? And then uh, I kind of custom made a uh, a filter for. Um, for the dust and uh, to minimize dust and so when uh, when the computer is running the the rear fan always blows in air and the CPU cooler always you know always blowing air so uh, it'll minimize on dust and what else and that's pretty much it and I already gave you guys a rundown of all my parts and oh in in case if you want to know what this case is is the uh, Rosewell line M uh, I'm just building in this case the fit and finish uh, the finish is fine the fitment was kind of uh, kind of more like of a hassle because uh, this <clears throat> this case is really cheap and the, some of the metals really thin like the I give you guys an example like the uh, PCI slots in the rear uh, it it doesn't have covers for it. I mean, it does have cover in the in the kit that comes comes with this, in the case, but uh, only comes with two covers. And the in the back where um, you'll have to pop off the um, the PCI slots uh, to put in your video card. So it's not like the um, more expensive cases where it's uh, is it's just a thumb screw and you just unscrew it and it does co already come with um, uh, brackets on there and uh, dust covers or whatever it is the um, PCI covers 
and then all you do is just pop it off and then just put it in but this one you actually have to snap it off and then you can't put it back in uh, at least you have like and you have the um the bracket to put it in so the cover to put in so um this is fairly cheap and that's a char characteristic of cheap cases where you actually have to snap stuff off um in more expensive cases you don't have to do that uh, this case is selling on Amazon for about $50, but when I got it, it was only $35. That's why I bought it. And it had uh, all the features that I wanted, but also I didn't really mind, like, I didn't know how cheap it was. Uh, the side panels, uh, the side uh, doors are not bad, but they're pretty thin. Uh, the main feature that I really liked about this uh, case was uh, the front I.O. which it had uh, the headphone and a microphone jack and it does have the power and reset but and it had two USBs and two uh, two USB 2's and two USB 3.0's uh, other cases like the Cooler Master only had two USB 2.0's and one USB 3 so um, the USB 3.0 header on your motherboard uh, actually supports two but um, you know, it's kind of wasted if it's just one. That's why I chose not to go with the Cooler Master N200. I think that's what it's called. Um, but uh, after building in this one, I would probably suggest buying the more the the Cooler Master in uh, 200 because uh, I believe the the finish on it is probably much better. Because I've I've worked with uh, Cooler Master cases, and uh, they're they're built pretty tough and the side panels are really pretty thick too they don't wobble like this one does uh, I did cut my hands um, working with this case because uh, I don't know I think it might it might have been I didn't even realize when I got uh, when my hand got cut but I, I maybe believe it was uh, when I was taking off the um, PCI slot in the rear because you have to snap them off so I probably slipped and cut my finger on there um, pretty much um, the finish on it is not bad, but the fitment it wasn't it wasn't that great. Had uh, minor uh, minor issues because it came to the point where I almost just stopped and just thinking about just uh, putting the motherboard and every fitting everything onto um, just putting the motherboard on top of the uh, motherboard box and just fitting everything just to power it up because uh, the um, it was kind of hard to put in the rear I.O. Uh, plate and it was hard to put in, line up the motherboard uh, motherboard uh, standoff onto the onto the motherboard, lining up and screwing it in. It was such a big hassle because it was really tight on this side and I actually had to take off this fan right here, the rear fan right here, just to fit the motherboard in without scratching it because it was so tight inside. So uh, I suggest if you're going to build in this case, then you should take off the fan. Uh, you should always, uh, for this case, you have to put the power supply in first. Because if you don't, have, you don't put the power supply in first, you're going to have major problems when uh, you put in the motherboard and then you're going you're gonna to route your cables. Uh, what I did was put the power supply in first, route all the cables, uh, and then um, what I did was... Uh, then put in the the motherboard, actually take off this fan, put in the motherboard, and then after that, uh, plug everything up, uh, plug in the um, bottom, the front panel headers, the front panel uh, power button and everything, onto the Q connector, plug it in, front audio, and then uh, make sure you connect, uh, there's a fan header on this motherboard on the bottom, so um, that's what I did. I plug that in first and then plug in the front I.O. and then uh, um, plug in all these power cables and everything and then uh, after after you're finished with everything uh, put in the then you put in the rear fan because this is really easy to put in the rear fan <coughs> um, I ran to another issue with the video card um, I don't know. I don't know if it's just this my model of the case, the one, the sample that I got, or it's the um, the way that this case was made. But the the way that the 
the video card sits in there is not all that straight uh, when I when I put it in it didn't snap in perfectly uh, in uh, you kind of have to like kind of really push it in for it to snap straight and then when I screwed in these um the screws to hold the video card the the second um, screw was easy to put in but the top screw was really difficult to put in uh, if you have large fingers then I wouldn't suggest um, uh, putting using this case um, it was really hard for me to screw this in uh, by hand first and then with a screwdriver um, nothing that's not it looks pretty nice though after you 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 finish it's, it's not that bad airflow is actually pretty good uh considering that um it the front fan blows straight into the video card and uh the rear exhaust just goes out and then uh all the air that comes up is going to be caught by the heat sink and then the heat sink will blow out this way and and then uh the other fan uh the pull fan on this side would pull out, blown out this way. So there's really no air that gets stuck up here. And if you're into like modding or something, you could probably cut up the top and put like a 120 millimeter up here. Um, 120 millimeter fan up here, if you want. But uh, the the power supply does suck up some of the hot air right here and blows it out the rear anyways. So uh, there's really no problems up here. And I don't have no bait, no no uh, DVD player, and no DVD uh, writer up here, so it's all empty up here. And uh, that's pretty much it of my build for 2014. Um, if you has, guys have any questions about my build uh, or uh, any benchmarks that you guys want to see me run. Uh, just put in the comments below and I'll make new and then some videos about with the benchmarks and uh, post it on my channel and uh, Please rate and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time Bye